أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله المصطفى الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome to another episode of Tafsir page by page inshallah ta'ala today we're on page 144 which is in the 8th juz of the Quran Surah Al-An'am In the last episode we mentioned those verses which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us a number of important issues and principles with regards to mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the food that we eat and the food that we slaughter, that we therefore make halal to consume. And how the practice of the Arabs who came before the Jahili Arabs was that they would not mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over everything that they slaughtered. They would slaughter in other than the name of Allah. They would slaughter towards their idols and towards the other gods that they worship besides Allah Azza wa Jal. Or they would eat that which died of its own accord without ritually being slaughtered. And therefore the name of Allah Azza wa Jal also wasn't mentioned over it. And they would deem that to be halal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that there are two types of people. The one who has light and is alive spiritually and physically. And walks therefore across and around the people with that light and guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal. Such a person is not equal to the one who is spiritually dead, to the one who is spiritually unaware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore denies and rejects Allah azza wa jal. Those two people are not equal in every single regard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then also told us the importance of understanding how Allah azza wa jal is the one who chooses his prophets and messengers and how those prophets and messengers from the sunnah of Allah azza wa jal, from the universal laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he made for them enemies. And he made for them leaders from amongst those enemies who would oppose them because it was one of the ways in which Allah Azza wa Jal raises the station of the prophets and raises the station of his messengers through the tests that they have to endure and be patient with. Today we continue from verse 125 and that is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فمن يريد الله أن يهديه يشرح صدره للإسلام وَمَنْ يُرِدْ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدَرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَّدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ كَذَلِكَ يَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ الرِّجْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ When Allah wishes to guide someone, He opens their breast to Islam. And when He wishes to lead them astray, He closes and constricts their breast as if they were climbing up to the skies. That is how Allah makes the foulness of those who do not believe rebound against them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse, he gives us this amazing example. In the difference between the people of Iman and Islam and those people who deny Iman and Islam. And Allah azza wa in this particular verse, he focuses on the issues of the heart, of the chest of the heart. And how the one who comes to Islam and knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submits to Allah azza wa jal and lives their life therefore in accordance to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Allah azza wa jal expands for them their heart, how they live a life of peace and contentment and tranquility, how Allah azza wa jal from the greatest blessings of having Islam and Iman is that Allah azza wa jal gives to you contentment and happiness in this dunya, even if you have very little of it in terms of materialistic wealth. You may not have a great deal or a great amount, but because you have Iman, because you have Islam, because you have Ibadah and worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, because you, you are a person who recognizes Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and submits to Him on a daily basis, Allah Azza wa Jal gives to you something that is more valuable, more precious than the wealth of the dunya or others, other beauties of the dunya. And that is that Allah Azza wa Jal gives to you tranquility of the heart. Because how many people have the world and the dunya and everything within it, but when it comes to their heart, it's restricted. When it comes to their heart, it's narrow. When it comes to their heart, it's constricted. And it is something which each and every single day, they search for happiness and they think that they will find it through money or through fame or through power or influence or whatever it may be. But they find that none of those things really fills that hole that they find within their heart. And that is because that hole within the heart cannot be filled except with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his worship, Jalla fi'ula. The Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what fills that heart 
uh, or that hole in the heart. And that is what Allah Azza wa Jal then says here, فَمِنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ When Allah Azza wa Jal wishes to guide someone, He opens their breast to Islam, He opens up their heart to Islam. And you can imagine now when your heart is open, it is welcoming, it is something which is able to receive guidance and benefit from that guidance, that that is a, a feeling that is amazing. And the believer is someone who once they taste the sweetness of that iman, it is something which they continuously strive to maintain and to attain and to preserve within themselves. Because the, alter- the alternate, the alternative, and the, the other side of that equation is as Allah Azza wa Jalla then says, وَمَن يُرِدْ أَن يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ And those to whom Allah Azza wa Jalla wishes to lead astray, He closes up and constricts their breast as if they were climbing up to the skies. If you were to ascend higher and higher and higher as you were climbing a mountain, or if you were to go up to uh, up above into the sky without without any breathing equipment, one of the things that you find is because the oxygen becomes less, the higher up you go in altitude, the more difficult it becomes to breathe. And the more harder it is therefore for your body to get the oxygen that it requires, especially because you're exerting more effort as you're climbing and reaching a higher altitude. And because of that, then you feel a restricted, a restricted uh, you feel a, a type of restrictedness within your chest. You find it more difficult to breathe. You feel uh, pain. You feel you feel uh, lightheaded or dizzy. All of those are symptoms as a result of a lack of oxygen and a lack of being able to breathe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us over 1400 years ago this very example. But in the spiritual sense, that those people who don't have iman, those people who don't have Islam, their hearts are being restricted and constricted within their chest. It's as if they are climbing up to the trees, or uh, climbing up into the skies. And as they climb up into the skies, what therefore happens is that they are unable to breathe and therefore they are unable to live in a painless or a pain-free or an easy way that, is, that brings to them tranquility and happiness. Now the believer is someone whom Allah Azza wa makes things easy for them. That even in times of pain, in times of hardship, in times of sadness, they find through those difficulties and challenges the path that leads them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so even therefore, even though on the outside they're going through difficulty and they're going through hardship, Allah Azza wa makes their heart steadfast. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to them tranquility and gives to them peace and contentment. And as a result, Allah Azza wa favors them and honors them in that way. كَذَلِكَ يَجْعَلُ اللَّهُ الرِّجْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That is how Allah Azza wa Jal makes the foulness of those who do not believe rebound against them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because most people, if not all people, in this world, they're seeking a type of contentment, they're seeking a type of happiness, they're seeking a type of, 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 of tranquility, internally, spiritually. That is something which those people don't find, because everywhere they look for it, it is not the source of that tranquility or the place where they can find the happiness except for the people of Iman for Allah Azza wa guides them to that which He loves. And as a result, they take from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that contentment and that peace and that tranquility. Allah Azza wa then says in verse 126, This is the path of your Lord made perfectly straight we have explained our revelations to those who take heed. So if you want to find that path that will allow your chest to expand, your heart to be open, for you to find that inner peace and tranquility and contentment and happiness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the path to it. وَهَذَا صِرَاطُ رَبِّكَ مُسْتَقِيمًا It is the straight path that leads to your Lord that you need to find. That straight path that Allah Azza wa mentioned to us at the beginning of the Quran in Surah Al-Fatiha, the one that we repeat over and over again, the dua that we constantly make to Allah Azza wa Jal, اِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمُ Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. Or, as we know from uh, from the scholars of Tafsir, that once you have been guided, it means to continue to ask Allah for steadfastness and firmness upon that path that is straight. The straight path is the one that leads to Allah Azza wa Jal. As the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he drew a line on the ground, and then that was straight and lines to the right and the left. He said, this is the straight path that leads to Allah. And every single one of those other lines to the right and the left are the paths of the devils. At the head of each one is the devil that calls to them. They misguide you and lead you away from the straight path. And so the believer is the one who realizes, therefore, that the one that Allah Azza wa favors, 
with tranquility and happiness and peace and contentment is the one who follows a straight path that leads to him. And if they do so, and they do that in a way that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal, for them will be the greatest of, of reward. And from the greatest of reward is Jannah. And from the many names of Jannah, it is that it is the home and the abode of peace. So just as Allah Azza wa Jal gives to the believers peace and contentment in the dunya because of their iman and their worship of Allah Azza wa Jal and their upholding the tawheed of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal then gives to them a similar reward on Yawm al Qiyamah and in the next life. In verse 127, Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ They should have the home of peace with their Lord and He will take care of them as a reward for their deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these are the people that Allah azza wa jal will give to them Jannah. And Jannah as we know has many names that you will find in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa From its names is the one that is mentioned in this verse here 127 and that is that Allah azza wa calls it Darus Salam, the abode of peace. The believers, they greet one another with the words of Salam, peace, Assalamu alaikum. And from the names of Allah Azza wa Jal is that He is a salam, the bestower of peace. And from the names of Jannah, the abode of the believers in the hereafter, is that it is Darul Salam, the home and the abode of peace. The word peace here means safety from every evil and harm. Every evil and harm. Peace in the sense externally and internally. Peace in terms of you being safeguarded from harm and evil that can approach you physically and peace in terms of internal peace and contentment and happiness as well. That is what the word as means in the Arabic language. So when you greet someone, as we've mentioned before in this tafsir series, and you say to them, As-salamu alaykum, you're essentially making a dua for them, that Allah Azza wa bestows upon them peace, gives to them safety from every harm and from every evil and from every hardship that Allah Azza wa gives to them, goodness and happiness. And then when they respond and they say, Wa alaykum as you are, they are essentially returning that greet, greeting to you as well. The name of Allah Azza wa is As-Salam because He is the one who bestows that upon His slaves and His servants subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when the people of Jannah enter into Jannah, it is an abode of peace, meaning that within Jannah, therefore, there is no harm. In Jannah, there is no evil. In Jannah, there is no hardship. In Jannah, there is nothing that will detract from the blessings and the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the person in Jannah, spiritually, physically, and psychologically, in every single way and sense, they will have happiness and they will have eternal bliss. That is the meaning of Darus Salam. So these people, they sought in the dunya peace. And they found that peace through Allah Azza wa Jal and the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal and the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, Allah Azza wa Jal will give to them that peace in abundance and for eternity as well. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And he will take care of them as a reward for their deeds. He will be their protector in this life and the next. And just as Allah Azza wa Jal gave to them and blessed them with Tawheed and Iman and the ability to perform good deeds and worship him in this life, then Allah Azza wa Jal will give to them something similar in the next life in terms of his reward subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal then says in the next verse 128, وَيَوْمَ يَحْشُرُهُمْ جَمِيعًا يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ قَدْ اسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاؤُهُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ رَبَّنَا اسْتَمْتَعَ بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْضٍ وَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَنَا الَّذِي أَجَّلْتَ لَنَا قَالَ النَّارُ مَثْوَاكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ on the day he gathers everyone together saying, O company of jinn, you have seduced a great many humans. Their adherents amongst mankind will say, O our Lord, we have profited from one another, but now we have reached the appointed time that you decreed for us. He will say, Your home is the fire and there you shall remain, unless Allah wills otherwise, your Lord is all wise, all knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks that on Yawm al-Qiyamah, wa yawm yahshurhum on the day that he gathers everyone together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address the people and he will address the jinn because these are the two creations of Allah azza wa jal to whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them free will and therefore they had the ability to believe or the ability to disbelieve, the choice to believe or to disbelieve. And Allah azza wa jal sent to them prophets and messengers and gave to them revelation showing them the path towards Allah azza wa jal and towards his pleasure. But there were many of them, in fact the vast majority of them 
refused to take that path and they denied and rejected the revelations of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address them on Yawm al Qiyam and He will say, O jinn, O assembly of jinn, O people of the jinn, Ya ma'ashar al jinni qad istakthartum min al ins, you seduced a great many of the humans. Because the humans would go back to the jinn and they would do what the jinn wanted in terms of doing shirk or committing kufr or acts that are displeasing to Allah Azza wa Jal and the jinn in return would give to them or help them in with using the abilities that Allah Azza wa Jal has given to them in terms of snatching news of the heavens for the fortune tellers or soothsayers or using some of the other abilities that Allah Azza wa Jal has given to them to do things that would then allow those humans to also benefit in terms of money or in terms of influence or power, whatever it may be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, O assembly of the jinn, قَدْ اسْتَكْثَرْتُمْ مِنَ الْإِنسِ You did a great deal of harm towards the people. You you misguided them, you turned them away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. You caused them to do that which is evil, to disobey, to disbelieve, to do a great deal of harm. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَقَالَ أَوْلِيَاءُهُ مِنَ الْإِنسِ But their, their people from or their adherents from amongst the people will say, from amongst the humans will say, رَبَّنَا اسْتَمْتَعَ بَعْضُنَا بِبَعْضُ O oh Allah, we profited from one another. As I said, the jinn would profit from the humans because the jinn wanted them to be to worship them or to obey them or to uh, do certain things that would please them and the humans would oblige. And they in return, the jinns would give to them certain of their abilities. They would help them with certain abilities that they possessed that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to them and therefore increasing the influence of those humans. Just like the Prophet told us وسلم, about the fortune tellers. The fortune tellers would obey the jinn they would do certain things and they would say certain statements of kufr and shirk that the jinn would like and they would be pleased with and in return the jinn would take from the news of the heavens and they would mix it with a great deal of, of falsehood and they would present it to those human people and they those humans then give the fortunes, they tell the fortunes of those around them and because on the odd occasion they are correct or right or some of what they say may have an element of truth, people believe them, they give them money, they have power, they have influence in their communities and their societies. And so it was a mutual benefit that they had from one another. But the jinn, for their help, they wanted them to commit shirk, for example, or kufr, or commit some major sins. Allah Azza wa says that they will say, so therefore, O oh Allah, they will say on that day, our Lord, we, pro- we profited from one another. وَبَلَغْنَا أَجَلَنَا الَّذِي أَجَلْتَ لَنَا but now we have reached the appointed time that you decreed for us, meaning now that we have come to this place, we know now that our actions will not benefit us. We know now that there's no opportunity or scope for us to take iman, to believe, to turn back to you. Now we have no excuse. We have no ability. We have nothing that we can do except to wait for your judgment and your decree, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jalla will then give them the, his decree subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will say, قَالَ النَّارُ مَثْوَاكُمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا Illa ma sha Allah, He will say for you, your abode, your home is the fire, and there you shall remain unless Allah Azza wa Jal wills otherwise. Inna Rabbaka Hakimun Alim, Your Lord is all wise and He is all knowing. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give to them His judgment and His decree. And as we know, that decree that is mentioned numerous times in the Quran is that those who disbelieve and turn away from Allah Azza wa Jal and commit acts of kufr and shirk to them, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will cast them into the fire. For all of eternity, خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا They will remain therein. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ حَكِيمٌ عَلِيمٌ Your Lord is all wise, all knowing. He knows what is befitting in terms of judgment and that is from His wisdom. And He has knowledge, intimate knowledge of what they did and what their intentions were and the evil that they did. And so Allah Azza wa judgments are not based on ignorance but rather upon perfect and full knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 129, continuing, with these, continuing speaking about these people from the jinn and the humans that did evil, وَكَذَلِكَ نُوَلِّي بَعْضَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعْضًا بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ In this way we make some evildoers have power over others through their misdeeds. We make them help one another, we make them allies to one another and we give to some of them power over others. Because the jinn had the upper hand in this relationship between these humans and the jinn. The jinn were considered to be more powerful to have the upper hand and therefore the jinn, these humans would worship them, they would obey them, they would divert some type of, of, of servitude to them or submission to them and in return the jinn would become happy and they would become pleased and they would use some of their abilities that Allah Azza wa has given to them in order to help those humans in return. And so Allah Azza wa says that this is from the way that these things happen. That in this way, meaning the disbelievers one to another, you will always find that some have power over the others. 
And that isn't just between these two creations, but even in a single creation, meaning the humans, as Allah Azza mentions in a number of places in the Quran, that on Yawm Al Qiyamah, the people who are weaker from the disbelievers, meaning that they were the masses or just the, the average people, they will turn to their leaders, whether it's religious leaders or leaders in the traditional sense. And they will say to them that it's because of you that we disbelieved. You were the ones who were leading us. You were the ones who were influencing us. You were the ones who were leading us away from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. That is always the case. And that is why it's not a sufficient evidence or proof or justification to come on Yawm Al Qiyamah and say before Allah Azza wa Jal, oh Allah, we only obeyed our forefathers. We only obeyed our leaders. We only obeyed our elders. Those are not sufficient evidences in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal or proofs or excuses in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal then says in verse 130, يَا مَعْشَرَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ أَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ رُسُولٌ مِّنْكُمْ يَقُصُّونَ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِي وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ وَيُنْذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا قَالُوا شَهِدْنَا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ O company of jinn and humans, did messengers not come from amongst you to recite my revelations to you and warn that you would meet this day? They will say, we testify against ourselves. The life of this world seduces them, but they will testify against themselves that they rejected the truth. Allah Azza wa will speak to these people, the jinn and the humans on that day from the disbelievers. And he will say, Alam yatikum rusulum minkum? Did my messengers and prophets not come to you? Yaqussuna alaykum ayati? Reciting to you from my revelations, وَيُنذِرُونَكُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا And warning you of this day that would come upon you, meaning the day of judgment, meaning that you have disbelieved and you rejected and you denied. But Allah Azza wa gave to you reminders and Allah sent you prophets and Allah gave to you revelation and Allah Azza wa sent you reminders and warnings that you may take heed and that you may take benefit and listen and be reminded and turn back to Allah Azza wa They will say in response, شَهِدْنَا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِنَا We will testify against our own selves, meaning that they will acknowledge that they rejected, that they denied, that they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa says, وَغَرَّتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا But it was the life of this world that deceived them. Deceived them by its trappings and its enjoyments, by its wealth and by its beautifications. وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ And once the, the evidence has been established against them, they will testify against themselves that they rejected the truth, that they were disbelievers, that they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa then says in verse 131, ذَلِكَ أَن لَمْ يَكُنْ رَبُّكَ مُهْلِكَ الْقُرَىٰ بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا غَافِلُونَ your Lord will not destroy towns for their wrongdoing if they had not been warned. And Allah Azza wa says, therefore, from His justice, from His kindness, from His mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the, 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 the kingdom or the kingship of Allah Azza wa is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish a people until those people have been warned. If they're in a state of heedlessness, meaning they never heard of Islam, no prophet ever came to them, no revelation was ever given to them, they never heard of the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal, it is not from Allah Azza wa Jal's justice that you would punish people without giving them the opportunity to learn and to believe and to take Iman and Islam. But if those people, once that has come to them, and then they reject them, Allah Azza wa Jal may punish them. Allah Azza wa Jal may destroy them. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala may do as He pleases with them. And that is why, as the Prophet told us, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those people who didn't receive revelation for one reason or another, no prophet came to them, or maybe they they spent their whole life in this world in the level of, of of not having their mental ability to understand they were insane, or for example, a child that dies before puberty. There are all of those people. Allah azza wa will judge them in in the manner that He sees fit on Yom Al Qiyamah, and Allah azza wa will hold them to account in a different way. Those people are different to those people who hear about Islam. They heard about the Prophet wasallam. they heard about the Qur'an, or they heard about the Prophets that were sent to them in previous nations, and then they turned away. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal then says in the final verse that we will take today, verse 132, Everyone is assigned a rank according to their deeds. Your Lord is not unaware of everything that they do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that every one of them will have their own ranks. Just as the believers have ranks, the more the stronger that your iman is, the more good deeds that you do, the more worship that you're engaged in. The people of Jannah are not all one level. 
There are a hundred levels in Jannah and Allah Azza wa will apportion people to those levels in accordance to their Iman and their righteous deeds. So likewise for the disbelievers, there are also darajat, there are also rankings. There are people who did more evil, who harmed more, who opposed more, who did more haram than others. And so Allah Azza wa doesn't make all of them equal, but there will be those who will give, be given a greater reward than others as there will be those who will give, be given a greater punishment than others. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا يَعْمَلُونَ And your Lord is not unaware of anything that they do. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, we will come to the end of today's episode. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.